Welcome to the newest installment of the Untitled Film Nerd Project. My name is Philip, and joining me as always is Teacher. Hello. And today we're going to talk about Three from Hell, the unrated version. Before we get into it, spoiler warning now! If you want to avoid spoilers, skip ahead to the time code you see on the screen. All right, so let's get into it. Okay. What'd you think of this one? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Before we begin, um, I'm laughing because uh, full disclosure to the audience, TJ is not the biggest Rob Zombie fan. No. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he was very unhappy to be watching this. So this will be an interesting mm -hmm. discussion. This will be interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Rob Zombie has done five original movies in his directing tenure. Those being House of a Thousand Corpses, Devil's Rejects, Lords of Salem, 31, and now this one. Three of his five movies, original movies, are a trilogy. So we start out with House of a Thousand Corpses. And while I didn't think it was great, I respected what he was trying to do. And he was at least attempting to be different in the horror genre, even if I think Dr. Satan is a stupid fucking name for a character. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Devil's Rejects, which in my opinion was his love letter to Texas Chainsaw. And to this day, I consider it his masterpiece. I think it's the best thing he's ever done. Yeah, I'll definitely agree with that. Out of all of his movies, that's my favorite one. Right, same. And ever since, it's been a steady decline of quality and story. Uh, ironically, you liked Lords of Salem way more than I did. Yeah, yeah. I pretty much, I loved it until that bullshit ending. Nah, I didn't like, I, I thought it was self-indulgent and boring. Mm -hmm. 31 was just a fucking mess. And now this one. When this movie was over, I wrote in my notes. The very last thing I wrote was... What was the point? Yeah. It in no way expanded on the universe of these three people in a meaningful way. Mm-hmm. It just felt like Rob Zombie was shooting from the hip and deciding that day what he wanted the group to do. It came off that he had the first 30 minutes written, storyboarded, a clear vision. But once I got out of prison, he was improvising. So yeah, that's where I'll leave it for now. Uh, overall, a very disappointing end to a franchise that I really liked. What about you? Um, yeah, um... Very much the same thing. So one of the major things I dislike most about this is the fact that I liked Devil's Rejects so much. Oh, yeah, same. Because the very existence of this destroys Devil's Rejects. It takes all emotional impact of that movie away. This was just, as you said earlier, self-indulgent. This was... Gratuitous for gratuitous sake, yeah, vulgar yeah. for vul vulgarity sake, uh -huh. um, yep. nihilism for nihilistic sake. There was no point to anything. There was no character growth. There was no obstacles. I mean, hell, even fucking distance was an obstacle. When one scene they said, "Hey, let's go to Mexico." The next scene, they're in fucking Mexico. Yeah, I touched on that later as well. Like, and they are gifted with the power of not only convenience but plot armor oh yeah like impenetrable plot armor like i thought it was absolutely fucking laughable mm -hmm. at the end when the the mafia guys show up in that mexican town mm -hmm. and they go to kill otis and they shoot up the room and i swear i'm surprised there was not a otis shape on the wall <laughs> to nice. where everything was shot <laughs> But Otis. Right. <laughs> awesome. And it was just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it was. No point whatsoever other than to just release another movie and get away with it's only going to be in theaters for three days. That's it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's uh, that's how I felt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there were some things I did like. The acting for the most part, except for one person that I'll get to in a few minutes. Uh, I thought the warden and his wife and their friends were great in the scene at the house. I love the way Bill Mosley talks. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. his delivery is so fucking great. He delivers his lines with such bite. And the intensity and tone of his voice works for the character of Otis perfectly. Like, he was born to play this character. I'm glad Sid Haig was able to be in the movie, albeit briefly, and understood why they had to replace him with his health failing. And then ultimately passing away days after the movie premiered. And then I like the first 30 minutes for the most part. And I'll touch on that in a few minutes as well. But the first 30 minutes, it felt like the most focused and purposeful of the almost two hours of runtime we had. It felt like a logical follow-up to The Devil's Rejects. You mentioned them. I liked the idea and presentation of the Luchador Mafia. I thought that was fucking cool. And I liked the scene with Baby and the Dwarf in the room in Mexico. Mm -hmm. I thought that was like the most human we saw of anyone 
and I like that. So that's actually all that I liked. What about you? Probably, as you said, Otis, his delivery of lines is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is. Um, and then I also liked the dynamic between Otis and Winslow. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, just even that scene where they're comparing, who is it, Cagney and... Bogart. Bogart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was just hilarious. And as you said, you know, I, I kind of also liked the Luchador Mafia. Mm-hmm. I like the idea of them. Nice intro. Shitty execution. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. But, yeah, that's about, that's about it. Yeah. All right, here we go. Going to go on one of my ranty rants. What Go could... ahead. <laughs> <laughs> one of the few times you're welcome it. What could have been better? So much. Just so, so much. While I like the first 30 minutes, it also felt rushed which is ironic considering the next hour and a half felt like it dragged for five hours. This was Rob Zombie at his most bored, his most uninspired, and his most complacent. Everything was the checklist of Rob Zombie movies. Lots of swearing, check. Copious amounts of violence, check. Copious amounts of gore, check. Lots of titties, check. Yeah. Full frontal with naked women, check. I wrote in my notes, I wonder if Rob Zombie were gay, if there would be like a ton of naked dudes with their cocks swinging around in every movie. Yeah. It's like, we get it. You like tits and your wife's feet. Got it. Yeah. I mean, definitely at this point, if you're playing Rob Zombie bingo, you got bingo. Oh, yeah. You got bingo. Yeah. Pretty quickly. And speaking of his wife, usually Sherry Moon Zombie doesn't bug me. But Christ, did she jump the shark onto your character here? Mm-hmm. The overacting, I'm so crazy, pseudo Harley Quinn bullshit was not working. It made her character look like a moron. And completely ruined any substance the character of Baby had coming off of the Devil's Rejects. Mm-hmm. Like you kind of uh, referenced it. Like if you watch the previous movie and this one back to back, it's going to be jarring. Mm-hmm. And yes, they did address it with Prison having changed her and Otis saying she's not the same. But the changes just didn't work. And then in the end, she seemed to be fine. I I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know. And I'm sure I'm sure glad the Prison let her curl her hair every single morning. Yeah. Um. Speaking of mornings. Maybe don't chase the naked woman outside in broad daylight. There's a fine line between quirky and just plain fucking stupid. And she was the biggest detriment to the entire film other than the script. And that's the biggest problem overall, the script. The first quarter of the movie had a pulse, and it felt like it was going somewhere. But then they rushed through all of that to go on a glorified, boring-ass road trip. Where, as you said, one minute they're at a hotel, the next shot, they're in fucking Mexico. But then there's other stuff just like that. Like the warden trying to get baby out of prison. And then, then the building of tension. Oh, wait. Scene cuts. Never mind. They're back at the house now. Yeah. Or the super intense scene of everyone waiting until morning to go to the prison. Oh, wait. Scene cuts. It's morning now and the warden is leaving. Mm-hmm. Why skip over the intense parts? Nothing beyond that even touched the level of dread and foreboding of that dinner scene. Yeah. Nor the intensity of the warden getting himself coked up to help baby Firefly escape. Had anything in the latter part of the movie touched on those same emotions? Okay. But nothing did. And it seemed like it was a waste to just abrupt cut those scenes for the sake of getting to the more boring three-fourths of the film that felt like filler. And and just like random shit. Like, I, 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 I get that's kind of Rob Zombie's thing, but random clown wasn't explained. I, I guess nothing has to be explained in Rob Zombie's movies, but it served no real purpose other than to add to body count. Mm-hmm. and completely deflated what was a very harrowing scene with the people in the house. Like, to give an example, we both hated the first Strangers, but when they have people tied up, at least they didn't have a fucking clown knock on the door and come inside for no reason. Yeah. Also, since when do death row inmates get to go on chain gang work outside? Pretty sure if you're on death row, you're on death row. Mm-hmm. So yeah, these are some very broad strokes from me here on what I didn't like, but the movie itself isn't brimming with substance. So the glaring problems and dislikes are also like very wide reaching. So yeah, those are my, like the main things that I didn't like. What about you? I pretty much touched on everything earlier and you touched on everything else. I will point out another random moment that I absolutely hated Mm -hmm. and it involved baby. Yeah, there's a lot. When that guard took her down to the basement to Mm -hmm. have those other two inmates beat the shit out of her right and she walks away and then we get blurry camera effect which i hate blurry camera effect it's cheap Mm -hmm. and it's lazy and then oh surprise somehow baby who had her arms behind her back killed both of them and had time to spell out like a fucking message to the guard yeah in blood yeah 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 like, again, the power of convenience. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, 
pretty much touched on it earlier. And ultimately, like I said, this movie had no point. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. No, it didn't. So. Yep. So, yeah. Yep. That's it. All right. This isn't going to be a surprise to either one of us. Uh, all things considered, would you recommend it? Absolutely not. All right. You? Nope. I'm going to go on record as saying, and I've done it with you. I have defended some of his work before, but there's no defense of this. Mm -hmm. It starts out decent enough and then just gets lost on itself, doesn't capitalize on the actual moments of fear and dread, and instead chooses to focus on random as fuck road trip adventures and ends in a way that doesn't do the entire story justice. I don't care what happens with these three people at all anymore. I, I still say uh, The Devil's Rejects is his masterpiece, but as said, every movie since has been progressively worse and worse. Mm -hmm. And this one, for me, is the worst of all, because it's just Rob Zombie doing Rob Zombie shit for the sake of doing Rob Zombie shit. Yeah. Uh, there's no pulse. There's no clear vision. There's nothing here that made him an instant force in horror over a decade ago. So absolutely not. And after this, I'm kind of done. Mm -hmm. I don't care if he releases another movie at all. And I probably won't see it. Unless it gets glowing reviews and he finds his mojo again. Mm -hmm. This this killed me. I'm done. This, this ruined yeah. it. I'm just done with him. And, so. and as you know, I've been done for a long time. I know. So yeah. Thank you for suffering through it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know yes. you didn't want to watch it, but I wasn't expecting it to be this fucking bad. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Anything else you would like to add? No, that about covers it. All right. Well, that wraps up this episode. Thank you for listening. If you like the video, please hit the like button. Share it with your friends or cool people who might dig the VizCast. Please subscribe to the channel, including hitting that notification bell to stay up to date on the newest content. And there is a link in the description below for the Patreon that covers all of the creative endeavors, as well as access to bonus content. So please consider showing your support. And until next time, my name is Philip. And I'm TJ. And we'll see you in the next video, which will hopefully will be a better movie. Goodbye. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>